Hello and welcome to 3ABN Family Worship. It's a wonderful opportunity once again for us to be with you, family that is beyond mm -hmm. the living room here, <laughs> to reach to your living room there where you are. Uh, my name is John Dinsey and my wife Idalia mm -hmm. is with me. And again, we are rejoicing in the Lord because through a week of activity and work, the Sabbath comes mm -hmm. as a welcome yeah opportunity to be closer to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I was blessed this week. I enjoyed some of my husband's cooking mm. and it's so <laughs> wonderful to be able to work as a team in the yeah. home yeah. and share of God's blessings one with the other. And God has been good and faithful this week. My car didn't break down. Her car didn't break down. Praise the Praise Lord. The Lord. And we've been able to come to work and do extracurricular activities and so many other things that That's we right. do mm -hmm. outside of here. But it is a blessing to come to the end of the week and say, you know what, Lord, thank you for filling my life with hope. Amen. And thank you. you. And so that brings joy to our hearts to an anticipation to uh, these 24 hours of the Holy Sabbath day of rest that has been separated and, Amen. Um, mm. and blessed by the Lord to Amen. just come together and, and worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's true. Yes. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to draw closer to the Lord. During the week, it seems like you may be in a rush mm -hmm. or you know you have, oh, we got to wake up really early in the morning tomorrow to go to work. Mm -hmm. But the Sabbath day provides a, a more opportunity and it seems like you can uh, take a pause mm -hmm. and really connect with the Lord better. And mm -hmm. Not that you can't do it during the week, but uh, it seems like the Sabbath brings you more the presence Peaceful. of the Lord. Peaceful. It's yeah, peaceful. Yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, good yeah. Word. and we don't rush out the door. And sometimes I'm late to church, but you know, I'm enjoying the Sabbath. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. part of my experience right. that Sabbath morning. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, we're well, sharing speaking today. Speaking about family, <laughs> we need to introduce the other part of the family that's here. That's right. Donald Owen, <laughs> yes, welcome. Sir. Well, thank you for having us. It's just a blessing. I was going to say for me, the Sabbath is like an ark of safety. Amen. I don't know, I just, I just uh, there's like, like you said, that peace, that refuge. Mm -hmm. uh, just you, you break away from all the noise and the confusion and distractions. I just love Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know, having learned that now over the years, it just, man, it just, mm -hmm. it, it brings so much joy. The Lord really knew we would need the Sabbath. Yeah, and you get to fellowship mm -hmm. with one another and talk to one another. It's just mm -hmm. like, man, it's because you're always so busy at work and doing right. things. You can't mm -hmm. slow down and actually spend intentional time talking to people here. Mm -hmm. That's busy, right. But then that's sad. You can actually get to know your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you introduce mm -hmm. your wife next to you, please? Yes, yes, definitely. This is my wife, Janelle. We've been together, what, how many years now? Well, since what counting, year? <laughs> counting yes. in marriage, married in 2008. Yeah, and so that would be 13 mm -hmm. years and then how together, 24 years, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And just been really blessed to have mm -hmm. her by my side and a uh, journey together in Jesus. That is so important. Yeah. Amen. Having mm -hmm. Jesus at the center of your relationship, um, you know, mm -hmm. of course, he's Lord of the Sabbath, but it's just been a blessing and uh, to have her as a help me and we've done a lot of amazing things with Jesus. So. Amen. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you've good. grown together. Yes, oh, we yeah. have. Especially moving here in cornfields and <laughs> cow pastures. And <laughs> 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 but it's, it's beautiful, you know, when you sit down and reminisce and where you came from, where the right. Lord has you now. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the questions that um, comes to my mind is like, do you remember when was the first family worship you celebrated in your home mm. one with the other well let's see that would have been probably 2009 yeah you think yeah, so yeah when we started studying steps to christ <laughs> together mm. yeah that was mm -hmm. a great book very beautiful book that's mm -hmm. it drew us uh, stronger together and that's yeah. actually what drew you back into the church mm -hmm. actually really yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah wow powerful yeah. study and great book yeah but this one that we did it had questions at the end of it yes, okay Merlin and so study mm -hmm. but it was it was really just right where I needed to start. And like he was further along than me at that point, mm -hmm. but it just, it was perfect for me and God knew that. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. written in a, a simple to understand language. I mean, in every, mm -hmm. you know, I remember my aunt, I gave her a copy of the book uh, that she's, I, it was like a year or two later, I, came, I went back to the Dominican Republic and she said, you know that book you gave me? What a wonderful book. Mm. And that, there have been times, she says, where I've been frustrated or, or discouraged. I just pick up that little book and I read it and it just draws me closer to the it's Lord. Amazing. Mm. Amen. So that's the book wow. I recommend. Awesome. I've, I've read it many times and uh, 
and it's easy to get. You can get a digital copy by going mm -hmm. to egwwritings.org, and there the book is available. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, listen to it as well. You can download it. You can read it online. You can download it. And even uh, it's, it, it's been, uh, you can listen to it. Somebody else is reading it. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a it's a great opportunity. Yes. Not only that, you should try to get a physical copy too. Because yeah. definitely, yeah. Uh, you know, people like oh, to. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I like to circle. My book. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Highlight it and everything, mm -hmm. and then Pastor Denzi here, mm -hmm. you know, he's got his style, a little fine line yeah. and a little dot, and I can't even notice. <laughs> and then there are my books highlights, uh, fold here, fold there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Boy, yeah. He I doesn't like when I do that. Dog ears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It, oh, yeah, man. it is something about holding a book that yeah. it's just the the whole experience. I think it's just for me. I'm you know like very tactile and just mm -hmm. touching, and it's it is a different experience when you can read the book. And just like the Bible, I've tried. I do it you know on my phone and stuff, but it's just it's totally different. Okay. Yeah, to yeah. kind of piggyback what you're saying, it's a little easier on your eyes too. That digital stuff it burns your eyes. Yeah, yes. I look at computers Versus, all day. Well, so. depending on the size of the print, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, the the print is just so much softer on your mm -hmm. eyes. That's right. <laughs> you know, I was thinking when we first had our family worship. Um, as a couple, mm -hmm. you know, um, I remember, I have a bad memory, but certain things, has I, a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> certain things I remember, like, for example, we were reading the final events or Maranatha, it was mm -hmm. that Maranatha. Maranatha. Maranatha, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but what I really, really enjoy is the stories of Jesus. And I noticed how um, the closer we drew to each other or grew mm -hmm. together, then the topics would change. And then when the kids came, mm. then definitely we went, you know, a cradle roll level mm -hmm. so they can mm -hmm. also um, enjoy the, the family worship. And then when they got older, I said, babe, it's not a sermon time. It's just a short <laughs> 10, 15 minute yeah. family worship. <laughs> Theological discussion. Just as needed. <laughs> But anyhow. Well, today we have an interesting topic, I think, that uh, I hope uh, not only will be a blessing, but encouraging, and perhaps uh, mm, as we continue here, mm -hmm. may indicate you may need to make some changes. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about Jesus, and Jesus uh, visiting homes. You know, mm -hmm. we have some uh, examples in the Bible where Jesus visited some homes. You have Jesus visiting uh, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, but he also went to some homes that people were saying, now why is Jesus going over there? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, know, you think of yeah. um, uh, Zacchaeus. Oh, why mm. is Jesus going to Zacchaeus' house? Mm. So we like to take a look at these and try to get some principles, some ideas. What kind of homes did Jesus like to go mm. to? Yeah. Yes. But before we do that, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. Ask for his blessing so that uh, he will guide us in our study. Amen. Yes. We'd like to ask Sister Janelle if she'll oh, pray for us. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you, Lord, for this time that we can spend with you and with each other. Uh, thank you that, that you've given us this precious time, the Sabbath, the uh, sanctuary in time. Amen. I yes. thank you for this, um, this study and uh, what you're going to teach each of us through this and how you're going to reach people with this message. And I just pray that this message would touch the hearts and lives of those that listen and watch. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we don't know if there will be a part two to this uh, family worship, but we're going to see uh, things like uh, Jesus likes to go places where he's welcomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he likes to go where the people are willing to hear his mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. uh, he likes to go to places where the people listen to his counsel and follow it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he likes to be in places where you know, you pay attention to him. You know, it's a, uh, how about if a guest comes to your house? In the center of attention. You mm -hmm. open the door. Yes. And I say, you have a seat. And then you walk away and go about your business oh, and no. ignore mm. the guest that came in. Wow. And you get up and you leave. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So uh, <laughs> Jesus likes to be Respect. noticed mm -hmm. and that he's kind of the center of the attention. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some of these things. And uh, uh, we, we encourage uh, comments. That is Luke chapter 19, mm -hmm. uh, beginning in verse 1. Let's begin there. I'll read the first three verses. Okay. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief 
tax collector, mm. and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. Mm. Mm. So what do you think about these verses? Here is this rich man, and for some reason he wants to see Jesus. Mm. He's missing so, something. Yeah, I sound excited mm. too. It didn't mm -hmm. sound like it was like it was something some type of excitement, someone was get, getting his attention. Mm -hmm. Sounds like mm -hmm. to me. So he wanted to even literally climb a tree to see him. Mm -hmm. It takes a little effort. But, but I heard uh, Janelle say that he was missing something. Mm -hmm. He was rich, mm -hmm. but he was mm -hmm. missing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dalia, would you read the next three verses? Yes, it says on um, verse 4, So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Mm. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Ah, mm. so You know, I almost want to sing that little, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. <laughs> A wee little man, man was, was he. he. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quit your daytime job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Everybody boy. says, stop Don't singing. <laughs> but anyway, when you're little, um, we grew, uh, when we were raising our kids, we would sing these little songs and share the stories, mm, you know, scripture right. and songs, and that helps to memorize. Mm. So, but anyway, um, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and he had to climb up because he wanted to know what all the fuss was about, mm -hmm. what was mm -hmm. happening. And mm -hmm. being the rich uh, man that he was, I'm like, could it be that he was trying to see if he could do business with this, Maybe. with the person yeah. that everybody thought was so important mm -hmm. in surrounding him? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, I think it's, it's good. And in verse six there, it says that he received him joyfully. Yes. And it just makes me think about how Jesus, Jesus, when when he knows our hearts are ready, um, and he will he will only come to us, um, and in more and like, I guess and what I'm trying to say is he 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 comes in more abundance. I guess when he knows that we're ready to receive him, mm. Mm -hmm. and you know like he knocks at the door and he's a gentleman. Yes. He knocks and he waits, but he knew that Zacchaeus was ready, and mm -hmm. when a heart is ready, he will come. Well, and be there. I also be saw there. in that same verse it said he made haste mm -hmm. quickly. He didn't just yes, go. Yes, he didn't waste time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'll just see this Jesus guy whenever. No, he said, oh, I see this Jesus guy. He was really mm -hmm. drawn to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Something yes. was different about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps if we were to think about it right now, I'm like, oh, I would think if Jesus was to tell me Maybe I'd be like, oh, but my house is not ready. Mm. I still have laundry on the couch. I have to <laughs> right. fold. Same here. You know, yes. Maybe now, now it's not a good time or mm. today is not a good time. But whenever the invitation um, presents itself, mm -hmm. whenever the Holy Spirit wakes up that sentimental or that soft spot in our hearts, mm. that is the right. time to respond. Amen. Because... You know, a lot of things can distract us mm -hmm. and we forget about that heartwarming calling that the Lord does to us. Amen. That's right. You know, it's interesting. There are so many things to learn here. I know. Because um, you could see, well, Zacchaeus, uh, oh, I want to see Jesus, but, mm -hmm. oh man, I can't see him. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'll just, I'll yeah. just I guess I'll, I'll just leave. go home. Mm -hmm. No, he, he made an effort. Mm -hmm. right. He ran ahead. I can see him running ahead trying to find, he's smart, mm -hmm. trying to find a place. And we don't know how old Zacchaeus was, but um, you know, um, I don't know how old he was, but he climbed a tree. Mm -hmm. And it was, apparently it was an easy to climb tree. Mm -hmm. uh, sycamore. A sycamore mm -hmm. tree. Mm -hmm. So he, he made this effort to see Jesus mm -hmm. and really consider, he, all he wanted to do was see Jesus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And to his amazement, Jesus stops, looks and notices up. Him. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, that is something 
key right there. Mm -hmm. Jesus notices mm -hmm. each and every one of us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And you know, there is not one too big or not one too small. Amen. That's right. Not one too young, not one too old, because the Bible does say even before you were conceived, I knew you, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. right. And I knew you by name. Oh, so, you know, we have so many lessons as you um, discuss every detail in every Bible story that we, mm -hmm. we share. And the nice thing is to place yourself in that position. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Make it personal, right. you know. It is a story, but what if that were me? And yes, I need Lord Jesus to notice me. I need him to say, you know, Idalia, um, I'm going to your house mm. and I'm going to stay there. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's marvelous. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting that um, when presenting a message, um, sometimes I go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, and it says, Behold, I stand mm -hmm. at the door and knock. But notice how it continues. If any man hears my, my voice, voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him mm -hmm. and he with me. So I, I sometimes say, you know, uh, he's knocking, but he's also speaking because if any man hears my voice, because, mm -hmm. you know, True. when you yeah. want to get into a home, you go, yeah. And if they don't answer right away, it's like you, get more you, you more. knock a little louder. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it, there's a voice. And this this is an example here because uh, I, I used, I, I've said in sermons, Jesus knows you by name. He calls you by name. Mm -hmm. And here's an example. The Bible doesn't, never, doesn't say that he had previously talked to mm -hmm. Zacchaeus, but Jesus knew his name. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Jesus knows our name. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it says Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. And first, like, what? Like who? You know How my you name. You know me. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> who told you? It was like, you know my name. Yeah. So he's uh, amazed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And of all the people that were around, question: How many people would have loved to have Jesus come to their home? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's true too. <laughs> you see another aspect in the story, mm -hmm. another important thing in the story. I think it also took Zacchaeus like. Christ wants to co-labor with us. Yes. yes. And it took Zacchaeus to make that effort to go to that tree. Yes. So he saw his faithfulness in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we travel through the story a little later, you're going to see that God, uh, Jesus came to do more than just come to his house. He came to heal his house. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He came to heal his house. I'm talking you about know, his house. Many a times uh, we may invite our friends to come worship with us at the church. You know, mm -hmm. why don't you come with me on Sabbath? come and let's go to the Lord's house. Let mm. us worship together. Mm. And that's an invitation um, that we extend that the Lord places in our hearts to say it to whoever at that moment. Mm. It may have been that you've been in touch with 20 people that day or who knows, but all of a sudden one person, mm. you're just so moved to say, yeah. you know, I, I was at a, at a drive through the other day and uh, the young lady said, oh, Hi, Tita, you know, and every time you put your order, I already know, you know, Tita, your Aww. nickname. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, um, she, she dyes her hair green, now mm. it's purple, mm -hmm. but I used to call her green. Hey, green, how's it going? <laughs> oh, no, she switched <laughs> up on you. <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to call you now, you know? And so she's just the sweetest thing. And I said, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I have things going on at church and, you know, yeah, uh, she says, where do you go to church at? I said, well, I mean, at the Thompsonville Seventh-day mm -hmm. Adventist Church, and it's the best church in the world. So I want to invite you to come mm -hmm. to my church. And she's like, oh, you know, I've been thinking about going oh. to the church. I just might take you up on yeah. that wow. offer. Oh, cool. So, but I've been there before. I had not felt or, or you know, the conversation didn't surface itself. Mm -hmm. right. Or maybe I, mean, I was not tuned in, you know, in the things I should have been mm -hmm. thinking about it mm -hmm. at other moments but there's an opportunity that mm -hmm. the Lord presents to us to encourage others Amen. to come and, and hear uh, Jesus' um, counsel, to hear his voice. And, and he speaks to us through the message, mm. through a prayer, mm. through a song, mm -hmm. through the warmth of a, a sincere smile. Mm -hmm. you know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. No, it's, it's interesting when you mention that because uh, it's been a few weeks ago, my, my dad's been having some health issues. And so I went to Michigan to go help. And um, my mom was making plans to do something on, uh, it was a Sabbath day. 
that she wanted to sit down and talk to her sons about what to do when something happens to them because they're getting up in age. And it was on a Sabbath. I was like, man, I really don't want to have to do that on the Sabbath. But, but uh, anyways, I prayed on it, and the Lord moved the day, literally moved it. And so I went to, to the church up there where they're at the prior Sabbath before that. And as I'm getting ready to leave, they said, hey, man, since you're here, and they know who I am because I've been there a few times, I said, would you mind speaking this next Sabbath? So oh. got, my mom had plans for me to sit down that particular Sabbath to talk about her, but now it got moved. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to speak that Sabbath at church. Amen. And then I'm like, okay, mom. So in my head, I'm praying like, oh, it'd be cool if my mom and dad would come, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that Friday night, my mom, she says, you know, since you're going to speak, I think I'll come with you to the church today. Mm. I said, really? You're going to come? Yeah, I'm going to yes. come. So she came and... Anyways, just, it was a blessing, and um, it was just it was how God shifts and moves mm, things. Yeah. And then, you know, it's just amazing. And just what a blessing! Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when you're faithful in little things, it's just like He does something. It just Amen. opens Amen. doors. Amen. He knows our Amen. hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we better continue so, the story well, because this is one of the things that when we talk about Jesus visiting homes, mm -hmm. Jesus loves to go to a home where He is welcome. Right. right. And so as we tie the story of Zacchaeus mm -hmm. with Revelation three twenty, yes. that He's knocking at the door, mm -hmm. and where, what home does He go into? Zacchaeus. The ones who that opens the door. Mm -hmm. Right, you got to open for And Jesus inside. said, uh, Zacchaeus, I must abide in your house. Mm -hmm. Zacchaeus had to say, yes, he had to come, but he <laughs> joyfully mm -hmm. brought him to his home mm -hmm. uh, as an honored guest. So consider yeah. Jesus, welcome, number one, welcome Jesus and consider him as an honored guest. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Praise amen. Amen. So here, as we continue the story, yes. how about if we ask uh, Sister Janelle, okay. if you read verse 7 and 8. Okay. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Mm. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Mm. <laughs> so there's a confession Praise the Lord. There. There's a confession the Lord. There. <laughs> Repentance. Yes. Yeah, that speak was fast, about that. too. Speak yeah. about that. What, what do you see there? That was the fast. It's kind of like, like it just came out. Like, you know, it's like when you see Jesus and he comes into your heart and it's like, you just, Confession. you just, yeah, yeah, you just want to put it out there. It's like, he already knows anyway. Like, right. why not? And it right. helps you feel better and you clear, clear conscience. Yes. And the opposite of that, though, the people are like saying, why is he going to his house? He's a sinner. Mm. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, how many of us are sinners? Mm -hmm. But you know what? The people can tell us we're all sinners right, saved right. by grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're all sinners. There's not one better than the other. Mm -hmm. You may have a higher position than the other, but you know what? In Jesus' eyes, we're in this boat together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, salvation mm -hmm. is individual. So when you are looked at, oh, you're such a sinner, why would so-and-so, why mm -hmm. would Jesus? Well, because the Lord knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he knew that Zacchaeus was ready. He knew that that Zacchaeus climb up that tree, I don't know, as fast as he could climb mm -hmm. it. And he went down the tree as fast as he could. <laughs> as soon as he received that verbal confirmation, because I am going to stay in your house, Zacchaeus, and everybody's ready to criticize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. oh, Why? Boy. Well, because you know the past, mm -hmm. but you know the you don't right. know the present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know that I knelt by my bed or mm -hmm. or or that I just poured my heart out to yeah. the Lord. Right. And it's just in mm. consecration and said, you know, and the Bible says that if you confess your sins, mm. right, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and you are, um, now the two languages mixed up in my, in my <laughs> mind, but if you are, fa he is faithful and, and just yes. to okay. forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Amen. Now, does that take time mm -hmm. to cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Mm -hmm. Does that take time to be forgiven of our sins? Mm -hmm. For our sins to be forgiven that I just confess to the Lord? I don't think it takes mm -hmm. forever. I think mm -hmm. the Lord says, Once you're ready. forgiven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pro it is a process. It forgives yeah. you. Like, well, yeah, like different times. So like, yeah, like it, when you ask for it and, well, you, yeah. and you're aware of it. Yeah, aware of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. But uh, what, what I think someone mentioned earlier about in verse seven, they all murmured mm -hmm. yeah. and thinking about how when, when we make a change in our lives and we decide to follow Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, how sometimes our friends, they want to, 
pull us back. Oh, yes. well, why are you doing that? You like this better. You've done, you know, like, this is, yeah. yeah, and you're, you're just try to. better than me. Right. I'm a good person. And, oh, well, that won't work for you because you did this. Or, right. you know, like, mm -hmm. what, are you, what are you doing with him? You know, you're a bad person. You know, you've done these bad things. You're and, not worthy. Right, uh, yeah. There's a statement that mm -hmm. says misery loves company, right? Mm -hmm. so. Now, that's, that's an interesting thing, too, because Jesus is knocking at every door. Mm -hmm. Whether you're poor, rich, whatever race, whatever kind of person you are, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're, you know, there are some societies that have different classes. Jesus is knocking at every door. Mm -hmm. mm. But I, I, I guess I'd never noticed this before. And it is, it's, it's interesting that this part is there, that it says, uh, but when they saw it, they all complained, mm -hmm. saying, he's gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Now, do you think Zacchaeus heard that? I would think mm -hmm. Zacchaeus yes. heard that. But did that change what he was doing? Mm -hmm. No. He's too he drawn. Continued. So if people, if you are, if you are coming to Jesus mm -hmm. and you start hearing complaints about, oh, he's going to Jesus, and, and they're complaining murmuring. about you, mm -hmm. murmuring about you, mm -hmm. Continue going with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Continue following Jesus. Amen. No matter what kind of criticism you may hear, oh, he'll never change, he'll never change. Continue following Jesus. Amen. And you know, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's, uh, a, scripture, there's a scripture in John 12, verse 32, has come to my mind. You're saying it says, And if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw, draw all, all men. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's drawing people. So Zacchaeus was drawn to him. He's like, oh, mm -hmm. Please, I want to be forgiven. Please, I don't want to be like this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, what well, I wanted to say was that, you know, um, there has to be one that helps the person that feels unworthy mm. Mm. and that feels um, that are being labeled or what have you mm -hmm. to encourage them in their walk. Mm -hmm. You know, in this story, we see that Jesus was the, the motivator, the mm -hmm. encourager, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's the one that called, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And so when people make decisions uh, for Christ, there are families and friends or influences that they know mm -hmm. and they're leaving behind and we don't know what they're going through because mm -hmm. they're accepting for mm -hmm. Jesus to come to their hearts, right. Right. to live in their heart. They're, they're wanting a change. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we also need to be ready to nurture Amen. You know, each yeah. other in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, going to verse 8, oh, I'm sorry, you were going to say? No, I was just say those next two verses, 9 and 10. Oh, right? yes, we're going to, mm -hmm. I just want to say one thing about sure. verse 8. Notice it says, <laughs> Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to, to the, the poor. poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Four fold. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus say, Zacchaeus, this is what you must do. You got to no. restore, no, you got to do this. No. You already knew. Uh, you already knew what he needed to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. So when we're with Jesus, I, I like to say, he brings out the best. In yes. Us. Mm -hmm. and one other thing, the verse that came to my, comes to my mind, I think it's Romans 4. Uh, I have to look it up, but it's the goodness of God that leads us Lead to us, repentance. Leads us to repentance. I don't remember which book of Romans. I know it's Romans, but it's Romans. you know what you're saying, I totally we'll it. you know pictured <laughs> it. But that's awesome. It's, yeah. So as we as we see here, um, he he decides to make changes in his life, mm -hmm. and not only is he restoring, but he's returning fourfold. Mm -hmm. And there is a scripture in the Old Testament that says that you must return that which you have taken. But he's saying, I'm going to give it, what did he say? Four times. Four, four, four fold. fold. Isn't that marvelous? Mm -hmm. Wow. He must have been a very wealthy man to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when we do things that the Lord asks us to do, uh, that's Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Two, okay. Or despises thou the riches mm. of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God mm. leadeth thee to repentance. Mm. So it was the goodness of God leading Zacchaeus mm. to repentance. Amen. Well, we Amen. must read mm -hmm. verse 9 and 10. So what, is, what does that lead him to now since he's repented? Where does it lead him to? That's what 9 and 10 says, right? Please. Sure. Mm -hmm. It says, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come just to Zacchaeus. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> this day is salvation come to this, this house. house. Mm -hmm. Wow. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which is lost. And I found this interesting because studying this, 
When we ask God for forgiveness, it's as though we take on the identity of the son or daughter of Abraham. Amen. Mm -hmm. become a son when we ask that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. But he said salvation has come to the house, mm -hmm. not just to Zacchaeus, but anybody dwelling in the house with him. Mm -hmm. so That's right. Amen. So, Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, we see here, uh, you know, I'm, I just thought about this also. The, uh, <laughs> you, have, you have the Jesus making an announcement that there's jo more joy in heaven over or one race. Mm. Do you think Jesus said that, well, you know, um, salvation has come to this house, you know. He, was he somber? I think he showed joy yeah. as he was expressing mm -hmm. that he too is a son of Abraham. And, you know, salvation has come, I mean, rejoicing that Amen. Zacchaeus recognize mm -hmm. this is an opportunity, Amen. grab it and you know. Mm -hmm. Well, he would say sometimes, I'm, I'm reminded of John uh, chapter four, he was at the woman at the well and he met her. Yes. But then disciples came back, which you know, yes. Samaritans and Jews, they don't like each other. And, yeah. But he's like, uh, their disciples are like, you've got to be hungry, you need some food. You know, you need something to eat. He's like, I have meat you know nothing about. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this woman came and look what she's going to do, bring the whole entire town mm. to meet me. So. Wow. Praise Come meet me and it told me everything I ever did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, we need to talk about, that's another, another story we need to, uh, on another family worship. We'll okay, about we're that. getting way too excited about <laughs> yeah. this Bible topic. And well, it's wonderful though. Yes. So Jesus loves to go where he's welcomed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But here we also see that Jesus liked to be where the people are willing to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus. Right. And really, um, life was tra as transformed. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he went to the home and it could have been another story. It could have been that Zacchaeus didn't say any of those things, that he didn't repent. And Jesus would have to walk away sorrowful, mm. but he walked away mm. with joy, mm. knowing that salvation had come to the house of Zacchaeus because mm. Zacchaeus heard his voice. Amen. Zacchaeus accepted the invitation. Mm -hmm. And so today, when, when we go back to Revelation 3.20, and if we open the door, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. salvation can come to our house. Amen. Salvation can come to your home, Amen. listening to me right now, mm -hmm. if you open the door mm -hmm. to Jesus. And Amen. he is standing at the door, knocking. I got a question. I was just thinking about that. Could somebody in his household been praying for him? Ah, that's don't a good know, question. but we don't know. But that's that's a great possibility. Mm. Yeah, that's a great possibility. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, obviously, Zacchaeus had heard of Jesus because he wanted to see him, mm -hmm. and he went, "Who is this man?" And so I want to see this man. What kind of person is he? Is he like the others? Mm -hmm. But he saw something different mm -hmm. in Jesus, and mm -hmm. so uh, Jesus is is knocking on doors all around this world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all around this world. Amen. Well, we, we should go to uh, another story because there are many things. And there's one that uh, kind of ties animals. in with this Matthew 9. Was, uh, Matthew 9. Yes, okay. yeah. let's go to Matthew 9. Yeah, Matthew 9 is just um, very similar. You know, of course, Matthew, he was a tax collector too. And um, Jesus not said Not very some, well liked. Yeah, yeah, they're not very well liked, that's for sure, because they're extortionists <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But it starts in verse 9, and uh, he finds Matthew uh, in his booth. And he says, uh, and, and as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he saith unto him, follow me. So he's in, here he is, he's uh, inviting again, there's an invitation. Mm -hmm. And Matthew rose and followed him. Yeah. He didn't just sit there and go, oh, let me think about it. No, he got up and went. It says, and he came to pass as Jesus sat at meat in the house. Behold, many publicans and tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? Mm. <laughs> but when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Mm. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm. Wow. Mm. Amen. He's in the house of... Mm. Who was it? <laughs> wow. Uh, a bunch of despised people, right. according to the social custom, a, a bunch of despised people. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, you know, you ask yourself, apparently uh, they had never been visited by some priest. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say. Mm -hmm. But you can see the general feeling of the day was, look, he's going to a tax collector. Mm -hmm. And if that was what was going on around, no priest would dare step into the house because they want to protect their reputation, mm. you see. So, but Jesus is not afraid wow. to go into homes. Mm. 
That's amazing, Amen. yeah. Because what he's coming to offer, you can't get it anywhere Amen. else. Mm, Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. You can't get anywhere else. Mm. Yeah, I just you. want to encourage our viewers, our radio listeners, you know, sometimes we tend to do an inventory, self. Self-inventory? Um, inventory and evaluate and, and sometimes um, Sometimes as, we're hard on ourselves. Is yes. that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yes, we are very hard on ourselves. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we do the prayer line. We answer the phones. Mm -hmm. And we hear oh, yes. the pain. And we hear the uh, lack of, of motivation um, or and lack of accepting mm -hmm. that Jesus is willing to live in their home, mm -hmm. that Jesus is calling. But they're like, I know it is sounds all right, but I just don't know how to accept this, mm. Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And Don't sometimes worry. we need to learn to forgive ourselves. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. forgive ourselves, put everything aside. And if you don't have any strength mm. in you, just cry out just like Peter was sinking, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, then if you're sinking in your thoughts, mm. cry out to the Lord, Jesus saved me. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord will, will work with you and give you the strength to take yeah. that decision and go to the house of the Lord, you know. Amen. So, what you're touching on, when we, I had a lady call, it's been a couple of years ago on a prayer line, and uh, she had been in her 70s at this point, and uh, when her, her daughter was five, she was in her 20s, of course, she slapped her daughter across the face, uh -huh. mm. and for 50 years she held on to that. Oh, wow. 50 mm. years. And I, I took her into that John, the first John 1 9, like you talked about, you know. It talks about how if we confess our sins, they are faithful and just forgive us our sins and yes. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. I said, do you realize what that means? Mm -hmm. And she says, no, not really. What does that mean? It says, when you confess that sin, that record that's in heaven, mm -hmm. Jesus take his, takes his blood and he blots it out. It's mm -hmm. gone. Amen. And she said, excuse me? What do, you, what do you mean? I said, yeah, he takes it. It's no longer there. That's not on the record anymore. Amen. It's gone. She said, are you kidding me? Is it seriously, it's gone? I said, yes, it's wow. gone. She started At age crying. 70. She started mm. crying. She's like, no way, it's gone, it's gone. Mm. I said, yeah, oh, you don't have to hold on funny. anymore. It's gone. And mm. she's, Amen. she's Praise lit up. Just, yes. Yes. There's yes. something that came to my mind while you were talking about how sometimes maybe we feel like we have to clean ourselves up before we go mm. to church. It's church. Mm. Yeah, because I know the first time that we started going back to church, it was intimidating. It was tough to walk through that door the first time. and. I know people that have said, you know, I, well, I just, I need to do this and this and this before I go to church. And, you know, I got to just clean myself up and clean, you know, my life up. And it's like, God will take us where we're at. Mm -hmm. And just Amen. taking that step and not letting the enemy mm -hmm. prevent us from, from taking that step and walking through those doors because yeah. it's, it's hard at first, but he wants to rob us of that blessing. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. That's mm -hmm. rightfully ours. Ooh, you know? yeah. This is a good point, you know. Um, God forgives us. And you're mentioning God blotting out the sins. It's interesting to consider that, um, and I remember we had a, a, you know, a Bible question come in that mm -hmm. way. You know, these things are still in our mind. And sometimes the devil pulls some strings mm -hmm. to bring that to our memory to discourage us, mm -hmm. uh, to, to bring us down. Mm -hmm. And we must accept that God does forgive us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it's, to him, it's like you have never done it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So mm -hmm. I, I was, as you were talking, I was thinking of this verse mm -hmm. because it seems to speak to that. Uh, it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 19 and mm. 20, and Hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our hearts condemn us, you know, the, mm -hmm. the things in our mind, right. oh, I remember mm. I did that, I did mm. holding. and that brings you down. If, for if our hearts condemn us, condemn us, God is greater than our heart mm. and uh, knows all things. And so I guess, I don't know, is it wrong to ask this question? Who are you? Hmm. to condemn yourself when God has already forgiven you. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. God That's is true. greater than your heart. And mm -hmm. if he forgives you, accept it. It's almost right. like, you're, a favor. Yes. like you're putting yourself above God. Yeah. Because if he can forgive you and you won't forgive yourself, you're, you're, taking, you're taking something on that, that God oh. has already... Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It's a trick of the devil. Mm -hmm. right. It's one of those things he uses to bring us down because it's still in our memory. The time will come mm -hmm. when God will wipe... You know, the, the Bible says God will wipe all away, all tears from our eyes. God will wipe all, you know, you've been forgiven. 
I'm going to give you a clean start. It's gone. Oh, man. Mm. That would be a praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord, huh? <laughs> 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 well. That's right. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Well, we have to continue. Time yes. is really sneaking oh, what up. We, what, what we emphasized um, in Matthew, Matthew 3, 9, was it that you started reading? Uh, 9, verse 9 through 13. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was eating with the tax collectors. And sinners. Sin and sinners. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was being criticized for that. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first tax collector that we talked about was Zacchaeus. Uh, Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, people that we think that are not uh, deserving, if you mm -hmm. will, or worthy. So please, no one feel unworthy. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when Jesus died on the cross, he, you were mm -hmm. on his mind. Mm -hmm. So for he died for all humanity. And yes, we have our, our highs and lows in life. But, you know, today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. And it may be the first family worship that you watch on 3ABN. Um, there are plenty more. If you download the app, you can also follow the programming 3ABN Plus, mm -hmm. right? 3ABN Plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing is that it's different topics that are presented, and this is how we do it around our, our family living room. Mm -hmm. You know, just mm -hmm. sitting around the coffee table, just visiting and, mm -hmm. and sharing songs and scripture and discussing, you know, these stories and these lessons. There's so much to learn here. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, Amen. I just want to encourage everyone to just come to um, visit your local uh, Seventh-day Adventist church and enjoy what it is to worship on the Lord's Sabbath day. Mm. Mm. So Let's take a look else. at another story in yes. Luke chapter 5. Luke 5. Luke, Luke chapter 5. And in this story, this is a wonderful, wonderful story as well. Let's see, Luke chapter 5. And this one begins 17. in verse 17. Mm -hmm. Idalia, would like five. to read the, please read the first three verses. 517. Yes. Mm, here it is. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisee, Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of t every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Mm. Then, behold, men brought on a bed, a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And then they could not find how they might bring him in. Because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling, tiling? Yes. Into the midst je before Jesus. Mm. What a marvelous mm. story. Yeah. I love this story. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love it. <laughs> what a marvelous like, story. So oh, they. Like Zacchaeus. Hmm? They had to go up on a roof like Zacchaeus had to climb a tree. They had to make oh, an effort. Again. Very interesting. And they yes. had to make an effort again to get up to go see Jesus. That's right. Mm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. You're not obligated. We see this, right? Mm -hmm. You're not obligated. Mm -hmm. But there's something that burns in us mm -hmm. into something that calls us. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit works in us mm -hmm. to do whatever it takes. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is a beautiful story as they're lowering him through yes. the roof. That's right. Now we, of course, the houses we live in now are not that you can just open the roof and <laughs> bring out like a right. saw on. <laughs> you have to do a lot of Sun work roof. to get to a roof like that in today's standards. But anyway, uh, it shows an effort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to bring somebody before Jesus. Yeah. What do you see here? Does it show these people have faith? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that and how they, um, you know, when someone is very weak in their faith, and they have trouble and they're discouraged and you know here this is physical but sometimes it's mental and yes. sometimes we need to maybe not physically um, taking them like we see here but we're spiritually taking them to mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. and trying to get them um, because they're they're we they're weak in their faith yeah and they need their friends to take to support them to Jesus mm -hmm. okay. You know, this story has a very special place in my heart. I mean, I've loved it um, from day one. And, you know, it shows you 
how we what we've been discussing it to be a support system mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. a support mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and um and i will share one thing with you um, it doesn't matter where the person is it could mm -hmm. be in the hospital um and they could be going through difficult times but we all need support right. in and some way or mm -hmm. another right. That's right. and if you would mm -hmm. we listen to the holy spirit the lord will speak to us and will mm -hmm. show us unique ways mm -hmm. to be able to be of that support, Amen. spiritual support to another. So, and I will say that when my brother, as you, many of you know, he passed away, but um, the Lord placed in my heart to do half worship with him at 1230, midnight 30, every night I said, Lord, could it be that this is what you're calling me to do? And right away I thought about this story because once I obeyed and I called and the nurse would kindly put the phone next to his ears. I had shared uh, what the Lord placed in my heart with other people and the group grew to like seven and nine people wow. mm -hmm. at 1230 at night. Wow. Yeah. And we were mm -hmm. presenting my brother to the Lord mm -hmm. so that uh, the Lord will do his his work mm -hmm. and like I was telling mom, mom, what is most important is the spiritual healing, yes. mm -hmm. right. the spiritual Amen. healing, yes. then the mm -hmm. emotional healing, mm -hmm. the physical healing is last mm -hmm. because we want to, for my brother to come back to the Lord and have that opportunity for to live for eternity. Amen. Amen. So we shared tears of sadness, but more tears of joy because of the hope we have in Christ Amen. that when we pull together and we um, help people come to Jesus' feet, you know, there's nothing better mm. than right. more yeah. satisfying than that. Mm. So mm. I, I just encourage you all at home to be those friends mm -hmm. that took that cut and helped this paraplegic um, Paraplegic is designed in different ways, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anxiety, right. you know, mm -hmm. and these are things that are not commonly or easily um, like discerned or noticed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yes, but as friends, as believers, mm -hmm. um, we must mm -hmm. make an extra effort mm -hmm. to climb up, not the sycamore mm -hmm. tree, but to climb up the, um, the rooftop of the home if you will, mm -hmm. and and break our nails, and, and you know what mm -hmm. I mean, and right. dig in, mm -hmm. and do whatever it takes to bring somebody mm -hmm. before Jesus. So we're talking about this concept that you know, a friend sticks closer than a brother. Jesus mm -hmm. is our friend. He's always there. Like we're talking about the paralytic. You know, mm -hmm. these men knew that Jesus would be this man's friend. So mm -hmm. you bring him the one who can really heal him. Amen. That's a beautiful picture. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's that's it is a beautiful picture because when you when you look at this story, you learn. Uh, so many different things, including mm -hmm. that sometimes friends must help their friends right. get right. to Jesus. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, and this par paralytic, uh, he couldn't get through the crowd mm -hmm. on well, his he own. Believed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he believed. Mm -hmm. And he believed. Yeah, and they believed. Faith. Yes. Right. So there was faith involved in this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we got to get him to Jesus. Yes. And we have to. We have to. Sometimes we have to take. That same matter. I got to get this person to Jesus yes. mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, they're going to be lost. We got to get this person to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about a person that was willing to go to Jesus, of course. Right. We're not going to start dragging people. <laughs> You're coming with us. Like, <laughs> right. no, we can't do that. Uh, but <laughs> <turn> out <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if they are willing, oh, yes, mm -hmm. come, I'll show you. Mm. You know where to go. You know where he is. Uh, how can I learn? How can I, you know, like, like uh, Idalia started a conversation with somebody and invited mm -hmm. her to church mm -hmm. and the Lord had already started preparing the way before mm -hmm. Idalia talked to her. Mm -hmm. So when she said it, you know, I might just take you up mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. So the Lord prepares the way for right. these things to happen. Mm -hmm. And if we are receptive, mm -hmm. we will be able to discern or hear his voice mm -hmm. to see these opportunities to talk to mm -hmm. people about Jesus. And that's what I was thinking yes. about when we were talking about fr being friends with someone and like you're talking about, maybe they have something mentally like either anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. And if we're friends with that person and we're in tune with them, then we'll recognize that something's mm -hmm. off. Yes. And if we're paying attention, 
Mm, yeah. That's right. That's and you right. know, life gets so busy at times, mm. and sometimes we fail because, well, okay, we're not perfect, but at mm. the same time, right. let's be held accountable. You know, mm. how much mm. are we willing to do for another soul? Mm. Mm. You know, how long do you um, work with them, or how long are you helping them, mm. or wh why not say, you know what, I have all these things to do, mm. but the Lord is presenting this opportunity. Let's take advantage of it, and you know. You may have plans on doing your own thing, mm. but it's not bad to put others first. Right. You know, it's, mm. you know, certain needs mm -hmm. of others. And, you know, it's like you said, we have to be in, I don't know why this story came to mind, but I'm going to share it anyway. Like, <laughs> uh, I remember somebody that called here at Rivian one time, and this person was just complaining. Yes, complaining and complaining. And uh, I was listening, and then... Uh, when I would think of something to say, you know, because you're praying, you know, you're looking, talking about the prayer, you're, you're praying, asking the Lord to give you something to say to the person, to help this person. And every time I said something, it was like he would take that and <laughs> hit that out of the park and, you know, and go down another, another avenue of complaining and complaining. But he was complaining about his life in different situations, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. every time I would say something, again, he would just Very bring negative. things down. And I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm at the point of, you know, there are other people that need prayer. This person mm -hmm. apparently uh, doesn't want help. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was, I was ready to say, well, thank you for your call. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. You know, looking for a way out, but mm. it's like the Lord wouldn't let me. Mm. And, because, and I would say, okay, what else, Lord? What else? What scripture? What do I share with this person? And I, I, I would say that and again, smack it out of the park, you know, no, I don't want to hear that. No, no, no. <laughs> and so finally I say, well, something came to mind. I said, oh, he's going he's gonna to hit that away again. And I, and I said, well, I'm going to try it. And I <laughs> said this thing that the Lord put in my mind. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it was like I was talking to a different person. Wow. He was like, what? I never thought about that. <laughs> wow. Oh, and he goes, I love you, man. Praise oh, the Lord. I love you. Wow. You know what? I love you, man. And I was like, is this the same person? <laughs> is this the same person? And wow. so uh, we talked and I said yes. And, and, and this person <laughs> was completely, totally off this complaining uh, wow. thing that I said. And after the phone call was over, I said, God is really amazing wow. because yeah. if I would right. just handle that on my own, mm. right. I would have said, you know, given up a long I would have given ahead. up a long time ago, but it was like, yeah. well, I'm going to hang up. No, no, no <laughs> not yet, not yet. And, and it's said, like, you got to let the Lord be in control. Amen. And I think it was good that you were also attentively listening because yeah. sometimes you just like drown them out like, oh boy. Here we go. Here's mm -hmm. a spiel, just, you know, you know, kind of thing, but you're actually <laughs> attentively mm -hmm. listening. Yes. Like, there's a time I can jump in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say this. So God was giving you that opportunity to say, mm -hmm. yeah, listen. So, and as we go back to the story, we'll see that Jesus faced some of these things, as we saw already with Zacchaeus. Let's, wow, time is just disappearing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we're going to just read all the verses and then ask for a final comment. How about that? Okay, mm -hmm. so we were, we read uh, in Luke, Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 17 and 18. I'll go ahead and read the rest of the verse. It says, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Mm -hmm. Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Mm. Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk. Mm. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, mm -hmm. he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Amen. Mm -hmm. Immediately he arose before them, mm -hmm. took up what he had been lying on, yes. and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed, mm -hmm. and they glorified God, God, and were filled mm -hmm. with fear, saying, we have seen strange things. You know, it's, it's interesting wow. when you look at that, it's, it's contagious. Yes. Mm, it's like it's true. just spread. I'm not going to say mm. COVID. No, it's not COVID. <laughs> oh, we no. want COVID. No, we want to spread Jesus, you know, the Holy Spirit. Good thing. And you could just see that. It's just like, wow. 
and are all glorifying God and like, this is amazing. If we mm -hmm. were to live every day like that, yeah. mm -hmm. how much we can more we can testify. Definitely. Yes. You know, sometimes we forget mm -hmm. that joy of the Lord right. yeah. and to share it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of a sudden I feel like preaching right now, brother. <laughs> but we're going to go right. to church on Amen. Sabbath and yeah. we're going <laughs> to hear the sermon. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, Janelle, any final comments? Well, I think this has all been so, um, things that we talked about and we've brought out from the stories, I just thank the Lord that He shows us something different. Sometimes when we, yeah. you know, we can read a story that we've heard a thousand times, but yeah, I, th I like what we've talked about today and I've never seen some of these things before and just it was helpful for me. It was neat. Neat yeah. in due yeah. season. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good stuff. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Donald, anything final that you'd like to say? I just uh, think that we're talking about this idea, um, Jesus in your home. He wants to abide in your heart mm -hmm. because He ultimately wants to heal you. That's, That's what His right. goal is. Mm -hmm. He wants to heal you. He wants you to, to restore you and bring you back to Himself. Amen. So right. I just, I'm seeing any stories. He wants to bring mm -hmm. people to Himself. Amen. 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 Well, uh, Idalia, anything more for you? I, I'm blessed <laughs> and I thank the Lord for His Word that brings joy, hope, it mm -hmm. brings instruction mm -hmm. and it awakens desires and decisions, mm -hmm. self-evaluation. Yes. So I encourage my brothers and sisters at home, my friends, the, our family in Christ, to be encouraged and to enjoy what Sabbath is. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there may be a few more things that we can share about this story. And if the Lord provides another opportunity, we'll talk about more about Jesus wanting to come to your home. But I hope what you have heard has encouraged you to consider that Jesus Christ is knocking at the door mm. of your home, Amen. your heart. Amen. And the only one that can open the door is you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, he says, if anyone opens the door, I will come in. Jesus is not going to open the door. Mm. So he is calling and knocking at your door. Mm. It's your decision. You can open the door and be blessed. Mm -hmm. Or you can remain with the door closed and Jesus sadly has to walk away. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to open the door to Jesus because when He comes in, the blessings are beyond your imagination. Amen. Our time is up and we must end by saying, happy have a happy Sabbath. Sabbath. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Amen.